Hi everyone! Welcome to Teen First Chapter Fridays. My name is Jess. I am a librarian at the Tippy Canoe Branch of the Milwaukee Public Library here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, coming to you today from my bookshelf at home. Um, we're doing First Chapter Fridays because we really love talking about books with our patrons and because we can't do it in person right now while our buildings are closed, we thought we would try to do it this way. Um, so what I'm going to be doing today is reading the first chapter of a young adult novel. The book that I'm going to be reading the first chapter of today is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Um, the main character of Fangirl is indeed a fangirl. Um, Kath is a brand new college freshman and she is also a huge fan of a book series about a teenage boy who has no parents, discovers he has magical powers, gets sent to a magical wizard school, meets some magical wizard friends, has lots of adventures trying to save the school and the world. Um, and this is called the Simon Snow series in the book Fangirl. Um, Kath is really, really into this series. She and her twin sister have been obsessed since they were kids. Um, they go to conventions, they go on message boards, they write fan fiction. But at the beginning of the book, Kath and Ren is her sister's name, um, are going to college. They're college freshmen and they're moving into their dorm. And Kath has just learned that her sister Ren does not want to live with her, um, which is a pretty huge blow. So that's the setup for Fangirl. Let's read chapter one. I will say before I start reading, I do have a dog uh, who gets very excited whenever he sees almost anything outside the window. So if we hear some barking, it's just my dog. Sorry. Okay, Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, chapter one. There was a boy in her room. Kath looked up at the number painted on the door, then down at the room assignment in her hand. Pound Hall, 913. This was definitely room 913, but maybe it wasn't Pound Hall. All these dormitories looked alike, like public housing towers for the elderly. Maybe Kath should try to catch her dad before he brought up the rest of her boxes. You must be Cather, the boy said, grinning and holding out his hand. Cath, she said, feeling a panicky jump in her stomach. She ignored his hand. She was holding a box anyway. What did he expect from her? This was a mistake. This had to be a mistake. She knew that pound was a co-ed dorm. Is there a such thing as co-ed rooms? The boy took the box out of her hands and set it on an empty bed. The bed on the other side of the room was already covered with clothes and boxes. Do you have more stuff downstairs, he asked. We just finished. I think we're going to get a burger now. Do you want to go get a burger? Have you been to Pears yet? Burger's the size of your fist. He picked up her arm. She swallowed. Make a fist, he said. Kath did. Bigger than your fist, the boy said, dropping her hand and picking up the backpack she'd left outside the door. Do you have more boxes? You've got to have more boxes. Are you hungry? He was tall and thin and tan, and he looked like he'd just taken, up, taken off a stocking cap. Dark, blonde hair flopping in every direction. Kath looked down at her room assignment again. Was this Reagan? Reagan, the boy said happily. Look, your roommate's here. A girl stepped around Kath in the doorway and glanced back coolly. She had smooth auburn hair and an unlit cigarette in her mouth. The boy grabbed it and put it in his own mouth. Reagan, Cather, Cather, Reagan, he said. Kath, Kath said. Reagan nodded and fished in her purse for another cigarette. I took this side, she said, nodding to the pile of boxes on the right side of the room. But it doesn't matter. If you've got feng shui issues, feel free to move my stuff. She turned to the boy. Ready? He turned to Kath. Coming? Kath shook her head. When the door shut behind them, she sat on the bare mattress that was apparently hers. Feng shui was the least of her issues and laid her head against the cinder block wall. She just needed to settle her nerves. To take the anxiety, she felt like black static behind her eyes and an extra heart in her throat and shove it all back down to her stomach where it belonged where she could at least tie it into a nice knot and work around it. Her dad and Ren would be up any minute, and Kath didn't want them to know as she was about to melt down. If Kath melted down, her dad would melt down. And if either of them melted down, Ren would act like they were just doing it on purpose to ruin her first day on campus, her beautiful new adventure. You're going to thank me for this, Ren kept saying. The first time she'd said it was back in June. Kath had already sent in her university housing forms, and of course she'd put Ren down as her roommate. She hadn't thought twice about it. The two of them had shared a room for 18 years. Why stop now? We've shared a room for 18 years, Ren argued. She was sitting at the head of Kath's bed, wearing her infuriating I'm the mature one face. 
And it's worked out great, Kath said, waving her arm around their bedroom at the stacks of books and the Simon Snow posters at the closet where they all shoved their clothes, not even worrying most of the time about what belonged to whom. Kath was sitting at the foot of the bed, trying not to look like the pathetic one who always cries. This is college, Ren persisted. The whole point of college is meeting new people. The whole point of having a twin sister, Kath said, is not having to worry about this sort of thing. Freaky strangers who steal your tampons and smell like salad dressing and take cell phone photos of you while you sleep. Ren sighed. What are you even talking about? Why would anybody smell like salad dressing? Like vinegar, Kath said. Remember when we went on the freshman tour and that one girl's room smelled like Italian dressing? No. Well, it was gross. It's college, Ren said, exasperated, covering her face with her hands. It's supposed to be an adventure. It's already an adventure. Kath curled up next to her sister and pulled Ren's hands away from her face. The whole prospect is already terrifying. We're supposed to meet new people, Ren repeated. I don't need new people. That just shows how much you need new people, Ren squeezed Kath's hands. Kath, think about it. If we do this together, people will treat us like we're the same person. It'll be four years before anyone can even tell us apart. All they have to do is pay attention. Kath touched the scar on Ren's chin just below her lip. Sledding accident. They were nine, and Ren was on the front of the sled when it hit the tree. Kath had fallen off the back into the snow. You know I'm right, Ren said. Kath shook her head. I don't. Kath, please don't make me do this alone. You're never alone, Ren said, sighing again. That's the whole effing point of having a twin sister. This is really nice, their dad said, looking around pound 913 and sending a laundry, setting a laundry basket full of clothes and shoes on Kath's mattress. It's not nice, dad, Kath said, sitting stiffly by the door. It's like a hospital room, but smaller and without a TV. You've got a great view of campus, he said. Ren wandered over to the window. My room faces a parking lot. How do you know? Kath asked. Google Earth. Ren couldn't wait for all this college stuff to start. She and her roommate, Courtney, had been talking for weeks. Courtney was from Omaha, too. The two of them had already met and gone shopping for dorm room stuff together. Kath had tagged along and tried not to pout when they picked out posters and matching desk lamps. Kath's dad came back from the window and put his arm around her shoulders. It's going to be okay, he said. She nodded. I know. Okay, he said, clapping. Next stop, Stram Hall. Second stop, Pizza Buffet. Third stop, my sad and empty nest. No pizza, Ren said. Sorry, Dad. Courtney and I are going to the freshman barbecue tonight. She shot her eyes at Kath. Kath should go too. Yes, pizza, Kath said defiantly. Her dad smiled. Your sister's right, Kath. You should go. Meet new people. All I'm going to do for the next nine months is meet new people. Today, I choose Pizza Buffet. Ren rolled her eyes. All right, their dad said, patting Kath on the, sho on the shoulder. Next stop, Shram Hall. Ladies, he opened the door. Kath didn't move. You can come back for me after you drop her off, she said, watching her sister. I just want to start unpacking. Ren didn't argue, stepped out into the hall. I'll talk to you tomorrow, she said, not quite looking, turning to look at Kath. Sure, Kath said. It did feel good, unpacking. Putting sheets on the bed and setting her new, ridiculously expensive textbooks out on the shelves over her new desk. When her dad came back, they walked together to Valentino's. Everyone they saw along the way was about Kath's age. It was creepy. Why is everybody blonde? Kath asked. And why are they all white? Her dad laughed. You're just used to living in the least white neighborhood in Nebraska. Their house in South Omaha was in a Mexican neighborhood. Kath's was the only white family on the block. Oh God, she said. Do you think this town has a taco truck? I think I saw a Chipotle. She groaned. Come on, he said. You like Chipotle. Not the point. When they got to Valentino's, it was packed with students. A few, like Kath, had come with their parents, but not many. It's like a science fiction story, she said. No little kids, nobody over 30. Where are all the old people? Her dad held up his slice of pizza. Soylent green. Kath laughed. I'm not old, you know. He was tapping the table with the two middle fingers of his left hand. 41. The other guys at my age, my age at work are just starting to have kids. That was good thinking, Kath said, getting us out of the way early. You can start bringing home chicks now. The coast is clear. 
All my chicks, he said, looking down at his plate. You guys are the only chicks I'm worried about. Ugh, Dad. Weird. You know what I mean. What's up with you and your sister? You've never fought like this before. We're not fighting now, Kath said, taking a bite of bacon cheeseburger pizza. Oh, jeez. She spit it out. What's wrong? Did you get an eyelid? No. Pickle. It's okay. I just wasn't expecting it. You seem like you're fighting, he said. Kath shrugged. She and Ren weren't even talking much, let alone fighting. Ren just wants more independence. Sounds reasonable, he said. Of course it does, Kath thought. That's Ren's specialty, but she let it drop. She didn't want her dad to worry about this right now. She could tell by the way he kept tapping the table that he was already wearing thin. Too many normal dad hours in a row. Tired, she asked. He smiled at her apologetically and put his hand in his lap. Big day. Big, hard day. I mean, I knew it would be. He raised an eyebrow. Both of you, same day, whoosh. I still can't believe you're not coming home with me. Don't get too comfortable. I'm not sure I can stick this out a whole semester. She was only slightly kidding, and he knew it. You'll be fine, Kath. He put his hand, his less twitchy hand, over hers and squeezed. And so will I, you know? Kath let herself look in his eyes for a moment. He looked tired and, yes, twitchy but he was holding it together. I still wish you'd get a dog, she said. I'd never remember to feed it. Maybe we could train it to feed you. When Kath got back to her room, her roommate, Reagan, was still gone, or maybe she was gone again. Her boxes looked untouched. Kath finished putting her own clothes away, then opened the box of personal things she'd brought from home. She took out a small photo of herself and Wren and pinned it to the corkboard behind her desk. It was from graduation, both of them wearing red robes and smiling. It was before Ren had cut her hair. Ren hadn't even told Cass she was going to do that, just came home from work at the end of the summer with a pixie cut. Looked awesome, which probably meant it would look awesome on Cass too. But Cass could never get that haircut now, even if she could work up the courage to cut off 15 inches. She couldn't single white female her own twin sister. Next, Cass took out a framed photo of their dad, the one that had always sat on their dresser back home. It was an especially handsome photo taken on his wedding day. He was young and smiling and wearing a little sunflower on his lapel. Kath set it on the shelf above her desk. Then she set out a picture from, from prom of her and Abel. Kath was wearing a shimmering green dress and Abel had a matching cummerbund. It was a good picture of Kath, even if her face looked naked and flat without her glasses. And it was a good picture of Abel, even though he looked bored. He always looked kind of bored. Kath probably should have texted Abel by now just to tell him that she'd made it, but she wanted to wait until she felt more breezy and nonchalant. You can't take back texts. If you come off all moody and melancholy in a text, it just sits there in your phone reminding you of what a drag you are. At the bottom of the box were Kath's Simon and Baz posters. She laid these out on her bed carefully. A few were originals drawn or painted just for Kath. She'd have to choose her favorites. There wasn't room for all of them on the corkboard, and Kath had already decided not to hang any on the walls out where God and everybody would notice them. She picked out three. Simon raising the sword of mages, Baz lounging on a fanged black throne, the two of them walking together through whirling gold leaves, scarves whipping in the wind. There were a few more things left in the box, a dried corsage, a ribbon Wren had given her that said Clean Plate Club commemorate, commemorative busts of Sam, Simon and Baz that she'd ordered from the Noble Collection. Kath found a place for everything, then sat in the beat-up wooden desk chair. If she sat right here, with her back to Reagan's bare walls and boxes, it almost felt like home. And that is the end of chapter one! Um, so Fangirl is a contemporary um, contemporary YA novel by Rainbow Rowell, who also wrote Eleanor and Park, which is another great book. If you like um, contemporary young adult books, that's a great one to check out. Um, if fantasy is more your thing, you should check out Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Um, this is... Rainbow Rowell's um, take on the Simon Snow series. So she she had Kath be obsessed with it and then she started to write it. Um, so Carry On is awesome. It tells the story of Simon and Baz um, who both attend the same magical wizard school, have to fight evil. And it's super creative. It's got a really interesting magic system. 
um, awesome characters. It's super fun. The dialogue is great. It's very funny. Um, that's super. So that's Carry On. The sequel to Carry On called Wayward Son just came out earlier this year. Also great. Um, and there is a third book that Rainbow Rowell is working on. Um, I don't know when that'll be out, but it's called Any Way the Wind Blows. Um, the audiobook of Carry On is available in Hoopla. Um, Fangirl, Carry On, and Wayward Son are all also available in Libby um, if you would like to try to check them out digitally. So thank you all very much for joining me for First Chapter Friday. I hope you enjoyed the first chapter of Fangirl, and we can't wait to see you back in our buildings when the library is able to reopen.